Hi, Devin. Thank you so much for coming on Thrival Nutrition Podcast. How are you doing today? I'm great. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm so grateful that you are here. Um, I know we're going to be talking about toddlerhood. I know I have tons of mom listeners, which will appreciate this episode. Um, But before we get started, go ahead and introduce yourself, who you are and what you do. Yes, absolutely. So uh, my name is Devin Kuntzman and I am a toddler parenting coach. I'm also a certified gentle sleep coach and I am the founder of Transforming Toddlerhood. And I am on a mission to dispel the myth that toddlerhood is terrible by helping parents embrace this sensitive developmental period and uncover the joy and magic of toddlerhood while overcoming everyday challenges. Because we know, um, while toddlerhood, I truly do not believe um, is terrible at all. There's a lot of wonderful things about it. It's still very challenging and it's possible to um, really embrace it and enjoy it while overcoming these challenging moments that we're going to be faced with. Yes. Yes. Um, I know that when I had toddlers, it was very challenging, but I think it only felt so challenging because I was trying to do so many other things. Like I, we started having kids early. So um, I was finishing school and I was working full time and I was just doing all these things. So everything felt super more challenging than I think it needed to be. Um, but why are the toddler years so challenging just in general? Well, I really feel that that transition from having a baby to toddlerhood, um, that, that, that time of transition, there's so many challenges that come up because first of all, during the, the baby years, uh, we have so much support when we first have a baby. And by the time our baby becomes a toddler, that support has slowly dwindled away. And then there we are entering a brand new developmental period Yet all the support that we had when we entered infancy and having a newborn is normally not there anymore. So we're really entering this new stage in life without support. Um, So that is the first thing that I think that makes it really challenging. The second thing is, is that when, um, when toddlers are starting to, you know, exert their will for the first time, exert their independence, find out what does it mean to be me separate from mom, separate from dad. All of these behaviors can come as quite a surprise because we're used to with a baby, they generally go along with the flow. And, you know, of course there's some bumps in the road, but generally they go along with the flow. And um, then we have a toddler and they have their own agenda and their own opinions. And we are like, whoa, what is going on here? And that triggers us it feels really frustrating because we're like, wait, wait, I thought, I thought we were, you're going to listen to me and now you're not. <laughs> yes. Yes. That's very frustrating. Um, I think it is because they're just being, they're becoming their own independent person and they just don't have, they can't be vocal like we adults can and their brain just isn't as developed as, you know, ours is to explain I'm frustrated right now or, I don't want to do that. I want to do this. But if you look at it, sometimes even adults throw their tantrums. Um, We just throw it in different ways, I guess. (laughs) Yes. Yes. Oh my gosh. Well, it's so true. And when we look at this and we realize that, you know, we have fully developed brains and as adults, we still find ourselves doing things that we know maybe aren't the best. We're aware that maybe the expectation is different, but we still Mm -hmm. feel impulsive and we still have autopilot reactions. And so think for a toddler whose brain, um, the prefrontal cortex that really um, is responsible for things like impulse control and logical thinking, regulatory, um, regulating behavior, all of these things, it's not very developed in a toddler at all. So they're already up against this deficit that they have, which is you know, they're still whole individuals, but they're just not as fully developed and it's hard for them. Um, and so we have sometimes really unrealistic expectations of what it's going to, to look like in the toddler years. Yes. And I feel that it's not even just toddler years. It's also just through, you know, children in general. I mean, I have an eight-year-old, so sometimes I feel like my expectations, because I feel like you're eight, and then I say that and I'm like, oh, you're eight. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't expect that. Um, But sometimes as a mom, I feel like knowing that, that the development process just isn't as far along as we want it to be. Mm -hmm. Um, It relieves some of the like guilt that I have of just, I don't know, hate, like 
not hating, you know, what, what's going on, but just understanding more and being more graceful um, as they go through tantrums and all these other behaviors that parents usually do not like to deal with. Um, and then tell us a little bit about just the toddler terrible twos and to me it was the threes, um, but how we don't have to become unhappy during those stages because I know how easy it is to be very stressed out, <laughs> whether it's just a simple trip to the grocery store. Um, so tell us more about that. Yes. Well, you know, society has really um, presented us with this idea that toddlerhood is, is terrible. You know, the twos, the threes, even the fours that, you know, you, we hear all this like terrible twos, yeah. um, three major, or, you know, fierce fours, like all these things. And they really bring a negative connotation to the toddler years. And when we buy into this and, and we don't even mean to. Um, sometimes it happens subconsciously, but we've all seen and you know heard others and even ourselves sometimes just chalk up behavior to, oh, it's toddlerhood. Oh, you know, like it's just kind of brush it away because it's the toddler years. But really when we buy into this myth that toddlerhood is terrible, yes, it's challenging, but I, you know, I really believe it's not terrible. And when we buy into this, it undermines our parenting and caregiving ability because we're not as available to overcome the challenges because we're bracing ourselves. Like it's this fear, like we fear these challenges are coming, they happen, and then we feel helpless because, oh wait, it's just the toddler years. So we are just like say, oh, okay, there's nothing for us to do here. And so it really disempowers us as parents and caregivers. And it also really disregards the feelings of toddlers. It really minimalizes um, their feelings and emotions because something that may not seem like a big deal to us, or we could say, oh, they're crying for no reason. You know, something that seems like no reason for us is actually there's a reason for them. And so it really just does them a disservice because we're not able to truly um, recognize how they're feeling and then help them cope with their feelings. Right. Right. Um, do you find that, I guess, some of our responses, because of that quote, I'm just, you know, it's not about what happens to it, it's how we respond to it. Um, the people pleasing aspect of adults, because, you know, I find that when it's the terrible twos and it's usually when people are in public and there's a tantrum right in the middle of the store. And I feel that adults people pleasing aspects is just they ignore so much of learning to cope with a child to just you know conform and please people around them yes it's there's so much pressure and i think that this is another reason why toddlerhood is so challenging is because for the first time we're faced with outside pressures you know they really look us in the face um because you know when you have a baby okay some people there might be a few opinions like oh, breastfeed or don't breastfeed or, you know, co-sleep or don't co-sleep. And, you know, people can make you feel judged or, you know, in different camps. But when it comes to toddlerhood and our parenting skills are really tested for the first time on so many levels in the moment, yes, it opens up us up to all of this pressure, feeling like we need to conform to these social norms. And that pressure um, it makes us react from a place of fear instead of a place of um, confidence and empowerment. So it absolutely does um, affect, affect us on a deep level. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so talk about some perspective shifts and the power of it um, and how that can improve the way we handle our toddlers. Yes, well, you know, so when we're out there and um, whether we're at home or we're in public and we're facing all of this pressure and we, we really feel it bearing down on us, if we look at our toddler's behavior just on the surface and say, well, this is a misbehavior, they know what they should do, I've already told them, or you know, they're violating my boundary or they're not meeting my expectation, they're, they're clearly misbehaving here. So when we look at it as a misbehavior, it really leaves us more vulnerable to feeling embarrassed or feeling like it's, um, we're doing something wrong or we can't control our child. And um, so when we shift from this place of looking at behavior as a misbehavior and 
change and look at these moments as a signal that tells that a signal our child is sending that tells us they need help right now, that they're feeling dysregulated, they're feeling overwhelmed, they're feeling upset, that they're not able to cope with whatever's happening right now. That is what really, um, that, that perspective shift there can be so powerful because in general, perspective is how we understand the world. It's the judgments, it's every, the labels, it's um, everything that we use to understand our reality and our, 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 our world around us. And so when we look at behavior through one perspective, it brings out the negative aspect and we feel helpless and we feel like we're failing. When we look at behavior through another perspective, which is a signal that our child needs us, that need, they need our help to cope, then we're like, oh my goodness, they're not doing this on purpose. They need help right now and we can help them because I'm the best person to help them because as a parent, you're always the best person to help your child through these messy moments, I guess you could call them. Yeah, yes, for sure. Um, is there, um, how can we, I guess, figure out and take their behaviors and really understand what they're trying to tell us because they don't use words and it is harder for us to understand. So is there any tips and tricks that we can do that or maybe just a special chart that I missed throughout my toddler years that I could go by? <laughs> yes, yes. Well, you know, there is a lot out there that whenever we start to look, so if we're looking at the behavior just as the behavior on the surface and we're, and we react to that behavior, that's where we find ourselves, um, reacting a way that always doesn't make us feel good, you know, where we feel pressured, we feel stressed, and then we look back and we say, oh, why did I do that? I didn't want to yell. I didn't want to do that. I did it. Oh my gosh, I'm so mean. I really failed there. You know, it just starts this whole story. Like we just go down this rabbit hole. So instead of looking at the behavior, when you're, when you're in this messy moment, this challenging time, when there's this behavior, that you know seems like a little bit off kilter and you're like, what's going on here? If we look at the needs beneath the behavior. So when we try to understand the behavior on a deeper level. So this is like when we pause and we say, what's really going on here? Because a lot of times it's not about the behavior and what's happening on the surface. It's about a deeper feeling, emotion or need that a child is feeling. And those needs can be basic needs like tired, hungry, um, you know, feeling scared, um, needing to feel connected, um, all of these things, feeling sick, not feeling well, uh, feeling pain. These are all basic needs. Or they can be developmental needs. And toddlers have a very specific set of developmental needs that drive their behavior. And the biggest needs are exploration and experimentation. So experimenting with how the world works, exploring how the world works, and also exploring what does it mean to be me, separate from my parents, because it's really in the toddler years that toddlers, they start to develop the cognitive ability to realize that they're separate beings from their parents. And now they have to figure out what does it mean to be me? So all, a lot of behavior can be taken back to, um, you know, these developmental needs. And for example, um, you have a toddler who's like maybe sitting um, in a high chair or just even standing on the ground, you're standing somewhere and they have a sippy cup and they turn it upside down and they're just watching it drop, drop by drop by drop <laughs> on the floor. Or you have a toddler who takes a crayon and starts drawing on the wall or like on their um, comforter or something like this. For us, we're thinking alarm bells, misbehavior, misbehavior, they know better. But because they're impulsive and because they're looking to fulfill their developmental tasks of exploration, experimentation, they're just seeing what happens when I use a crayon on a different surface. What happens when water drops from my cup down to the ground, how long does that take? What do, what happens? And so they're just constantly have this need to learn and grow. So how we respond can either help them along in that learning and growing, or 
can um, kind of set them back from that learning and growing. And that brings me to my second really big perspective shift for parents is that we can't control someone else's behavior. We can only control our own responses. And to an extent, we can control the environment. Like we can choose what food we're going to give our toddler. We can't choose if they're going to eat it or not. We can choose if we give them a sippy cup or a regular cup. You know, we can choose if we give them crayons or if we give them markers. You know, we have choices over these things. And so um, when we really start to embrace the idea that we truly can't control another individual, we realize all we have left is influencing them. And we can't influence someone else if we're angry, if we're yelling at them, if we're shaming them. And so that's where we really see um, the merit to looking beneath the behavior and seeing what need needs to be met right now. I love that. Um, can you quickly go over and write things down, the needs that they were, that you just mentioned? Yes. Well, you know, there's the basic just needs that we all have, you know, right. uh, sleep, eating, and then, um, then the developmental needs are really experimenting. Okay. Um, experimenting and exploring. Those are the biggest. And then they use those experimenting and exploring in different categories. So they're going to use it in terms of, you know, what does it mean to be me? It's going to be in terms of how does my parent respond when I do this? Yeah. And how do they respond when I do that? And that's why you have toddlers testing boundaries all day long because they want to know that when this happens, this is the result. And once they, they test it and test it until they can trust that this is going to be the result. And the, when we respond to them from a place of compassion, from a place of meeting their needs, from a place of knowing in these messy moments, they need help and I can help them. It completely changes the conversation and that's where they really learn and grow and begin to trust us. And we build that, that trust in the relationship. Awesome. Awesome. I know when you were talking about coloring on the comforter and all that and on the wall, um, and we naturally want to think like they know better than to do that and get them in, in trouble or whatever. Um, it's like, but do they know better? They really don't. And that's, that's where those needs, what you mentioned, exploration, experimenting come in. And it's, it's good to know that as a parent, because I feel like when these situations happen, you're more aware of the situation and you don't act out of emotion, but you act, I mean, we have the ability to act more logically, unlike kids. Yes, um, yes. And it's hard when we're in that emotional response. And that's why perspective shifts are so important because the lens through which we look at the behavior and understand it will determine how we respond to it. Yes, 100%. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell us about a conference that you have coming up? Yes, I'm so excited to share with everyone that the second edition of the Raising Toddlers Courageously Conference is happening starting on November 7th. It's a five-day virtual conference that's free, and it's just for toddler parents. So there'll be myself and 29 other experts in toddlerhood um, toddler behavior development, positive parenting, um, parental needs and self-care, mindfulness, will be joining together to discuss the most important issues and challenges that parents face during toddlerhood. That's awesome. I'm so excited. And I know that it's good. people are going to start seeing it around social media starting next week. Um, when people go to the link that um, you're going to be sharing, is that just a kind of sign up link or are they able to purchase even like the full conference by the time they sign up? Yes, absolutely. So um, whenever they go to the link, that is how they can sign up and they will be um, then notified and get emails every day during the conference. And every day, five um, sessions will go live and each session is available for 24 hours. And knowing that we have busy lives and we have kids and also that this information takes time to really absorb and to implement that there is an option to purchase all of the conference recordings and receive some really amazing bonuses at the time of signing up, which is really exciting because then you can consume the information and learn at your own pace. And that's what really leads to sustainable um, change. In yes. And I've done so many like conferences and summits and I've always tried to like, 
it's free. I can totally get like five of them in a day. And I never end up finishing all of it. Or if anything, sometimes I forget a day and then it becomes overwhelming. I'm like, oh no, I forgot that. I forgot yesterday. Let me go back real quick. And it's just, so I think um, I started just purchasing more summits and conferences because I do like going back to it and having that information as well. Um, is there going to be transcripts and with each session? Yeah, there'll be notes. There won't be exact transcripts, but there'll be notes um, that are available for purchase with each session as well. And some awesome bonuses to really help you get started in implementing all of the concepts that and the tools and the strategies um, and implementing them in your parenting. And this is the thing with parenting, it is a marathon, not a sprint. And knowing that, knowing that each and every day we are learning something new and we are um, knowing each and every day that we wake up and we do the best that we can. No one ever wakes up and says, I'm just going to do the bare minimum of what I could maybe give to my child today and that'll just be good enough. No one ever woke up and said that. So we are all doing our best and we're all learning because we continue to learn until yeah. the day that we die and our children continue growing and developing, there's always something new to learn. And that is the really the true power of purchasing a conference with so much amazing information and so many strategies and tools because you can implement it over time because it is a marathon. It is not a sprint. Yes, 100%. Um, where can we find you though, just in general? Yes, you can find out more about me on social media, Facebook and Instagram at Transforming Toddlerhood and also my website, which is called Transforming Toddlerhood as well. I work with parents to really help them overcome these challenges and kind of let go of their fear, frustration and self-doubt in their parenting and replace it with confidence. And that really allows them to parent, to be the parents they want to be and the parent that they know that's in their heart, but sometimes gets covered up by all of the chaos and <laughs> the triggers and the daily stuff in life. And just sometimes not even knowing what to do in a situation. And so what we do is we create a plan. So then you go into it and you say, yes, next time this happens, I know what I'm going to do. And right, that right there gives you so much more confidence and completely changes the outcome of the moment. That's so awesome. I definitely encourage all my mom toddlers to reach out to you and to find you and follow you. Um, thank you so much for coming on today and just sharing your knowledge. You're so welcome. It's really, it's truly my passion and I'm, I'm so happy to be here.